All right, so let's look at this next problem. Collar C is moving downward uh, with a velocity and acceleration right here. At the instant, it has velocity of two, uh, which gives length CB and AB an angular velocity of 10 radians per second right here. This line right here, it did not have to tell us that. We could have calculated that ourselves. Ourselves using uh, either the relative velocity method or instantaneous center of zero velocity method. Uh, so for a lot of your homeworks, you are gonna actually have to do that um, before you even get to the heart of your problem. But maybe they'll give it to you. You know, if you're lucky, we're lucky. They gave this to us. Um, th this will definitely not always be the same values. These are the same values. Why? Uh, probably because of this point 0.2, point 0.2. It's kind of at a 45 degree angle. It's only true at this instant. Um, but if it does give that to us, then we can go straight to our acceleration part of our problem, right? Now, the main bar for this problem is bar BC. Uh, not bar AB. Bar AB is in pure rotation. Uh, it's pinned at A. It's going about A. I can find some things about um, bar AB pretty easily, but bar BC is not pinned at about a fixed point. It's not in pure rotation. Uh, so that's our main bar. And so I'm going to use relative velocity to maybe jump from maybe C to B, right? Uh, and I like to put the point that I know the least about over here. I know everything about AC, so I'm going to say AB equals AC plus A, B slash C, and I immediately rewrite this at, <coughs> as, um, sorry, alpha cross R minus omega squared times R, B slash C, B, C, B slash C, B, C. Okay, so if they hadn't given us this right here uh, as 10 squared, uh, then we would have had to calculate it, but they gave it to us so we can start from right here. Uh, we know R, we know o omega, we know R. Uh, we don't know alpha. Generally, that's not going to be given. Generally, that's that's kind of what we're looking for. Uh, here, we're looking for alpha of CB and alpha of AB. This right here is alpha of CB. Okay, everything inside of this term is for bar BC or CB. You know, that's it's the alpha of BC. It's the omega of BC. It's the R BC. Um, and so don't get it confused with the and any angular information of a different bar, all right? Uh, point C, do I know the acceleration of point C or do I know anything about the acceleration of point C? In this case, uh, we know it, it's one. Uh, I like to remind myself, uh, point C, it's just linear, right? It's just going down that rod right there. It's linear, so I don't need to overthink it. It's just, you know, negative one in the J. But point B, point B, do we know anything about the acceleration of point B? Because it's connected to this link, and it has nothing to do with BC or, or the rod right there, because it's connected that, to that link, uh, point B is going in a circular path. So acceleration for point B is normal tangential. So let me kind of don't hey don't forget a b normal and a b tangential from looking at um, bar a b not bar b c. So what I like to do anytime I see a point that is a normal tangential path, I like to uh, let me draw this in pink. I'm going to come over here and and make like a side note. Uh, by only looking at bar AB, that pink bar, uh, I'm gonna try to find as much as I can about AB normal and AB tangential, okay? So um, I'm taking a break from this relative acceleration part of the problem. I'm taking a break from the main, that's the main heart of my problem right here. I'm gonna take a break from that and I'm gonna look at just bar AB and see if I can figure this out. Maybe I know it completely. I can put lots of numbers right here, or maybe I can figure it out as much as I can. All right, so point B, it has some normal acceleration. 
into the curve and it has some tangential, so AB tangential and AB normal. Again, forgetting that it's connected to BC, this has nothing to do with BC, it's all of point B by looking at link AB. So AB normal, what's an equation for normal acceleration? R omega squared or V squared over R. Uh, if we knew the velocity of point B, which sometimes you will have known if you use these other methods. Uh, but I don't know that, but I do know the R, point 2, and the omega of bar AB, omega AB, uh, is at 10, 10 squared. All right. So this would be 20. And what direction is it? Uh, it is into the curve. Do you see the circular path for uh, point B? Uh, that would be in the positive J. That would be in the positive J. Okay? All right, what about AB tangential? AB tangential is R alpha. Uh, so this would be point 2. And this would be alpha of bar AB. Uh, is bar AB, does it have some alpha AB? Uh, it, yes, it did not tell us. And actually, that's one of the things that the question is asking for it. Uh, so, so let's say it has some alpha, so it would lead to an, a tangential acceleration of point B of point 0.2 times alpha of AB. So let me just go ahead and point 0.2 alpha AB. What direction? Uh, we're kind of lucky that this is just at the very, very bottom of a circle. The very bottom of a circle, the tangential direction would be all in the positive I in the positive eye. All right, so now I can take that right there and use that as my acceleration of B. So you see how we took a break from the part of our problem and we just looked at bar AB. Let's find the acceleration of point B. Now let's go back to our problem uh, and let's say, all right, what is the acceleration of B? It is 0.2 alpha AB See, this alpha of AB is different from the alpha on the other side of the um, equation, the alpha of bar BC. Um, so all of that is in the I direction, plus 20 in the J, equals acceleration of C. All right, that one was easy. Well, lucky there. Plus alpha of BC that I don't know, but I know it's in the K direction. Cross with R, and this is R because I did B first and then C, this is B slash C, B slash C, B slash C, from C to B, from C to B, from C to B, let's don't overthink it, uh, point 0.2 in the I and down point 0.2 in the J, all right? And then minus omega of BC, omega of BC is that 10 right there, minus 10 squared times point 0.2 I minus point 0.2 J. So there's my equation, and if you write that equation and you only have two unknowns, that's probably a good sign. You know, if you, if you, have, um, if you have three unknowns, then you're missing something. If you have one unknown, you, you might have missed something as well. Generally, a lot of these problems, we, we have that equation with two unknowns. So now we've got our I equation and our J equation. Our I equation, 0.2, alpha AB is in the I. Uh, what else is in the... Okay, so now let's think about this cross product and think about which one of these would show up in the I. It's a cross product. When you cross two vectors, you get the third vector. So the K cross with the J, that's going to be the one that ends up in the I direction. So the value 0.2 alpha of BC, um, and then positive or negative. Well, K cross J is negative I, and then I have one negative there as well, so that's why we, it becomes positive in the I um, direction. All right, now, which one of these is going to show up in the I? Uh, the one that was already in the I to begin with. It's not a cross product. I can't emphasize that enough. It's just a multiplication. So minus one, well, 10 squared times 0 0.2. Let's just go ahead and give it, it it's 20, right? minus 20. That equation has two unknowns. So let me jump to my next equation. All right, my J equation, what I have on the left-hand side. I've got 20 on the left-hand side. I've got negative 1 on the right-hand side. Uh, which one of these is going to show up in the J? The K cross the I. The point 0.2 
alpha B C. K cross I is positive J, and th th there are no negatives. So positive J right there. And then this one right here, the 0.2 times 100 would be 20, and minus, minus, so that becomes positive. Two equations, two unknowns. We're lucky that this alpha B C, uh, I can just solve from that second equation, it is 5 positive 5. What does that positive mean? It means I chose correctly. I guessed in the K, and in the K is counterclockwise. Plug that positive 5 back in up there and get alpha of AB is negative 95 radians per second squared. What does that negative mean? That negative means I chose the wrong way. What way did I chose? I choose. I chose an acceleration that would lead to a tangential acceleration in the I, you know, I chose counterclockwise, which is generally what I like to choose. Uh, and so that negative means it is in the clockwise direction. So 95 radians per second squared clockwise. So take a breath, you know, be, pat yourself on the back, you finish it, but go back and look at that and see if you understand it. Um, the heart of my problem was this black bar BC. So I did AB equals AC plus AB slash C and AB slash C. And immediately rewrite that as alpha cross R minus omega squared times R. If I hadn't already been given this 10 right here, I would have needed to use that uh, or needed to calculate that using relative velocity or in the instantaneous center method. But since I already gave it, they already gave it to us, I could go ahead and um, uh, start plugging things in. Uh, but I like to make a note of hey, are you, do I know anything about these two points? Do I know the direction of the acceleration? Do I see that it's in a circular path? So I saw that point B was in a circular path. Not due to this black bar BC, but due to this pink bar AB. That pink bar AB really confines, constrains point B to move along a circular path. And so I took a side note, uh, only looking at bar AB, let me tell you the normal acceleration of point B, it's 20J. Let me tell you that the tangential acceleration of point B is point to alpha of that bar, bar AB. Uh, and I was lucky that those were at the very bottom of a circle. It was just in the I and just in the J. Uh, be able to, well, I think we probably will do something. Be able to, if this one was over here and it has tangential that way and normal that way, and you have to, the magnitude of that would be R alpha, but it would, might be at some, you know, 30 degree angle. It might have to do cosine 30 I plus sine 30j, this one might be, you know, opposite, perpendicular to that. Uh, so we'll be able to break those normal tangentials into their correct uh, directions. Um, and then I can start plugging things in. Two equations, two unknowns. Be careful with the cross product and be careful with the multiplication right here, right? This is a cross product. This is a just multiplication right there. All right.